What's up, everybody? I hope you're all having a fantastic weekend. We have three pretty significant trades to talk about today, one of which took place yesterday. And instead of making an entire video on that one trade, because it isn't a massive deal, I decided to wait for a few more trades to happen so we could review them all in one video. So that's what we're going to do in this one. So let's start with yesterday's deal between the Winnipeg Jets and the Nashville Predators. The Winnipeg Jets acquired forward Nino Niederreiter from the Nashville Predators in exchange for a 2024 second round pick. It appears the Nashville Predators have finally decided to sell, which I think is a really smart decision. I'm interested to see what they do from now up until the trade deadline if they decide to move off any more pieces, maybe somebody like Matias Ekholm or Tanner Janot. I think this is a really good get for the Winnipeg Jets. It's been reported for the past couple of weeks that they were in the market for a top nine forward. It makes even more sense now, especially with Cole Perfetti being out for the next eight weeks. So the Jets go out and address that need here in acquiring Nino Niederreiter, who is a very consistent two-way play-driving middle six winger has six 20 plus goal seasons under his belt already has 18 goals this season so soon it'll be seven I think Nina Ryder is going to fill out the Jets top nine very nicely another aspect of this trade that I really like for Winnipeg is the fact that it's not just a rental Nina Ryder is signed through next season at a four million dollar cap hit as well I also like the fact that they didn't have to give up a first round pick in this trade if you watched the video I posted the other day where we've reacted to some ESPN mock trades one of the mock trades in that video was JVR to Winnipeg for a first and a prospect and I said in that video that I believe that was too much for James Van Riemsdyk at this point in his career and that the Winnipeg Jets could probably go out and get someone better for cheaper and that's basically exactly what they did here overall a really nice addition for the Winnipeg Jets I like this trade for them a lot and for the Nashville Predators like I said I believe them becoming sellers is well overdue sure they didn't get an insane return here for Niederreiter but a second round pick is definitely nothing to scoff at and hopefully over the next year or so Nashville continues to look to add draft picks and prospects and really build their cupboard of future assets. Moving along now to the next trade. This one took place today, a one-for-one -one swap between the Dallas Stars and the Montreal Canadiens that has the Montreal Canadiens acquiring Denis Gurionov in exchange for Evgeny Dadanov. The Montreal Canadiens are also retaining 50% of Dadanov's $5 million cap it, which is set to expire at season's end and make Dadanov an unrestricted free agent. Gurionov's cap it is $2.9 million, so the Dallas Stars are actually freeing up a little bit of cap space by making this trade as well as getting Dadanov, who is, I would say at this point, a much more reliable player than Gurionov, who has just two goals this season in 43 games. He's been a healthy scratch this season for Dallas on multiple occasions. He's a guy that I certainly believe could benefit from this change of scenery. Now, Dadanov as well, just four goals in 50 games. Not a guy who I think is going to move the needle all that much, if at all, for the Dallas Stars, but he did score 20 goals last year. He's still a decent playmaker at this point in his career and should benefit from going back to a contending team. And looking at this deal from the point of view of the Montreal Canadiens, I think it's pretty good asset management because remember, they traded Shea Weber's contract to Vegas in exchange for Dadanov last year. So basically, you turned in Shea Weber's contract, who's obviously never going to play in the NHL again, to Denny Gurionov, who was a 12th overall pick in 2015. He's 25 years old, so you get a much younger player in this deal. And although he's really struggled over the past couple of seasons, especially this year, the man cannot finish at all. But it's not like he's a player that's never shown high-end finishing ability. He scored 20 goals in just 64 games back in 2019-20, had 17 points in 27 playoff games for Dallas in their run to the Stanley Cup Finals in the bubble. Going to a young, rebuilding team like the Montreal Canadiens should really benefit Gurionov, and who knows, maybe he can get back to being that 20-goal guy. And now for the third and final trade we're going to cover in this video, the Vegas Golden Knights have acquired forward Ivan Barbashev from the St. Louis Blues in exchange for prospect Zach Dean, who is Vegas' 30th overall pick in 2021. He's got 49 points this season and 38 games for Gatineau in the QMJHL. He was also a part of Team Canada when they won the gold medal in the World Juniors this year. So the St. Louis Blues add yet another first round draft pick level asset. Like I said, Zach Dean, a first rounder by Vegas in 2021. You add him on top of the first rounder they got for Ryan O'Reilly and Vladimir Tarasenko. I would say the Blues retool is going pretty well. Barbashev is going to be a solid addition for Vegas. He had a career high 26 goals and 60 points last season in 81 games. Although that season definitely kind of an outlier when you look at his career as a whole his numbers have kind of came back down to earth this season with just 10 goals and 29 points in 59 games but nonetheless Barbashev is still a very useful versatile middle six player he can play either the center or the wing he's got a cap of 2.25 million and is set to become a UFA at season's end Vegas still has a ton of cap space even after making this move so they could certainly make some more moves between now and the deadline here LeBron actually reported today that he believes the Sharks are down to two teams 
teams in the Timo Meyer sweepstakes, and those teams were the New Jersey Devils and actually the Vegas Golden Knights. After this trade took place, a lot of people figured that this likely takes Vegas out of the Timo Meyer trade talks, but according to Darren Drager, this does not take Vegas out of the mix on Timo Meyer. So could you imagine if Vegas is able to somehow add Timo Meyer on top of Ivan Barbashev? I can't see it happening because the New Jersey Devils just have so many better future assets and prospects than the Vegas Golden Knights have, as to where the Devils could almost always counter whatever offer Vegas has on the table with a better one, especially after trading Zach D now, who was probably a top five prospect in the Vegas system, they would have to completely gut their prospect pool and their draft pick cupboard to get Timo Meyer. You'd probably have to trade guys like Lucas Cormier and Brisson, but hey, Vegas has shown in the past that they're really not afraid to mortgage their entire future to get win now players, so I'm really interested to see what happens with that whole thing over the next 24 hours. But overall, I think Barbashev is a nice addition for Vegas. He's going to make them a better, deeper team, but I do think the price tag was a little bit steep, giving up a guy who just drafted in the first round in 2021. So that is going to wrap up this video, breaking down the three trades that we have seen over the past 24 hours or so. I'm really interested to hear your guys' thoughts on all of these deals, especially if you're a fan of any of the teams involved. So leave your thoughts down below. If you guys enjoyed this video and you're excited for more trade breakdowns leading up to the deadline, then be sure to drop a like. That is the best way to show your support. And lastly, if this was your first time checking out the channel and you want more NHL content just like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and I will talk to you all soon.